Hello comrades and welcome to Crisis in the Kremlin, the greatest game ever made in the world. We are going to take a first look gameplay video to see how good this game is. Let's jump in please. Hello, so, hello guys, how's it going? Um, we're gonna go ahead and jump in here to Crisis in the Kremlin. And I think I've played enough to sort of understand the point of the game. From what I understand, the Soviet Union is gonna fall one way or the other, and you need to try and keep it going as long as possible. So, that's gonna be our attempt right here. Let's see how we do. So there's a bunch of different years you can choose. Obviously, I think the later you get, the tougher it gets. Um, at the same time, you can try to push the Soviet Union much farther than it actually did before collapsing. So I'm actually going to go for after Gorbachev. And I can e either take the neo-Leninist Yegor Ligachev or Mikhail Gorbachev, um, or a former a supporter of democracy, etc. No, we want to keep the glorious Soviet Union alive, but we will keep it uh, kind of moderate. We could actually also make our own character. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So here we go. All right, so the type, I could take a Trotskyite, I could take a confrontation policy. Uh, okay, so here we go, foreign policy, confrontation, conservative. I think Khrushchev is dead at this point, what the hell. Um, coexistence, friendship. Let's go for friendship. Let's try to be keep make communism happy and so people will like us and, and join our cause. Okay, interior policy, full control, or moderate control with Malenkov. We could even go for liberalization with Bukharin. And this would be the interior policy. And we'll keep the planned economy. So we're fighting with Bukharin. Can we even consider him a real Soviet? I don't know. Let's move. So here we go, guys. First of all, we've got a map of what's going on over here. Everything is pretty complicated and uh, not very clear. Even if you watch the tutorial, the tutorial is written in pretty bad English. So you kind of have a little trouble discovering what the hell is going on. That being said, there is a country list here. We can try to actually bring countries to our cause by um, uh, trying to, of course, uh, turn them to a Soviet system. For instance, here we could try and finance the pro-Soviets, but we can't do that right now. We actually have to wait a turn, so we're going to head back away from this area. And every time we click this, we're going to get a mission, more or less, that we have to respond to, and the next turn is going to show up. If we go to our phone, we could take a look at all our statistics. We could actually increase the price of extraction and the price of our oil. I'm actually going to increase it a little bit. We could give millions um, or pay loans over here on the right side. I think I will go make um, 10 hundred millions to reserve. And this is our leadership role, our leading politicians. We could actually put pressure on these guys. They each support sort of a different political party. Um, Ligachev is a really weak political figure right now. I might go after him. Gorbachev is out of the policy. These three guys are basically gone. We're not, we don't even have to worry about them. Let's put pressure on Grominko. And um, now we'll move back. And the glorious calculator is much, 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 much important. We have to go ahead. We actually, actually have to pay for the soldiers' equipment, the soldiers' living. And all we get down here is the hundreds of millions we paid out. We don't actually find a number, as far as I can tell, of how much we actually have totally. Um, I will also pay for the state mechanism, law and order, and the KGB. We're into thousand hundreds of millions, and you could also go into all this stuff. I'll go for army tech, um, and we could also give some envelopes or money for uh, KGB staff, intellectuals, etc. We're not going to do any of that right now. We're going to go ahead and um, just keep going, keep on moving. I will give some for agriculture and for infrastructure. Okay, is good. Yes. Let's take a look here. This will be our first mission, I believe. Okay, I thought uh, maybe Games was saying to my uh, Bandicam that uh, you are an uh, evil bureaucratic uh, bourgeoisie. We cannot let you uh, stream game. Soon the elections for your position will be held. You made this doctrine yourself. So since we started late um, in the Soviet Union, we actually sort of have real elections. Um, I could simply wait or send army to the capital to support me. That's what I'm doing. Uh, remember, we're trying to hold on to power. We're not trying to dilly-dally here. We won by a landslide. However, it's unlikely <laughs> that such interference will be forgotten. Very nice. 
Unhappy part of state authorities decided that you are a threat to the countries. They were trying to isolate you at your country house. They wouldn't succeed if they weren't supported by the Committee of State Security. Once again, we're going to send the army to the capital. The army stormed the government building and you were delivered to Moscow in a helicopter. Rebels gave up soon enough. Wow. As you can see, there's also great music going on and there's images back here of essentially the time period, etc. Um, so we have to be careful because now we know that our state services are trying to wipe us out and there's actually ways to find out exactly um, We'll go ahead and fight against corruption uh, find exactly who supports us and who doesn't so let's keep on going We might as well just keep paying a lot of money who cares Okay, I think I'm gonna put some CCTV cameras and re-equip the KGB so they can better defend me uh, so the secret police will be hopefully helping me here you can use this button right here to change options volume etc and you can actually pick um a bunch of different songs three wonderful cassette tapes with one song each is great glorious soviet gift you are welcome <laughs> 1988 presidential elections are going to take place in the united states and because we exist we have to try to influence the results okay uh we don't want to intervene it's not our business after unsuccessful economical reforms and suffering from hunger and isolated Burma, mass protests have begun which grew into uprisings. If it continues for a year now and leaders' retirement didn't change much, the army is ready to seize power and restore law and order in the country. What? It is not our business and never will be. This is a Burma issue. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. Your private advisor suggests to deal with your competitors to try to prevent our um, who try to prevent our rise to power and will try to further disturb our action. Remember, we're trying to be a little bit Stalinist, so I think I am going to lead the party against the reformers. Um, although Ligachov is much is is really weak. Yavlinsky is pretty strong. Grominko, I think we're going to go for Grominko. So here we go, guys. We are going to go ahead and attack him, um, and I think we just removed him essentially from any political power. For some years, the ruling power of the country has significantly increased, and now you can appoint another secretary of ideology. So we're, we can either take a social reformist like Gavlinsky or Ligachev the moderate. We're going to take Yavlinsky. Hmm. <laughs> Who didn't want to read Marx considers reforming the USSR as a key factor in building democratic and market socialistic society. Market socialism? What? I'm not sure that's socialism, but what do I know? Here we go. Um, other social spendings. Why not? Let's pay. And again, guys, the goal here is to just last as long as possible. Um, we also can... Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. No, sorry. I will pay salaries of officials. Sorry. Um, we also have import costs, things like this. All right, we're going to wait for the elections. We won by a landslide. Hey, the people are liking our socialist reforms. I think it's primarily because we're giving people so much damn money. That's the real reason, let's be honest. Okay, in Israel, we can't do anything to try and change Israel's uh, government, unfortunately. We try to support a revolution, and that was a success. So now we're supporting a revolution in Algeria. Um, excuse me, in Morocco, I believe. Go ahead and end the turn. Was it Libya? I, I This map is so bad. No, it's Morocco. I was right. I was right. Let's go back. Um, we could also subsidize the country, but we don't want to do that if a government we don't support is in power. Okay, after the overthrow of Guifeng, the Chinese government started to abandon Mao's foreign policy. All right, so they're trying to improve relations with us. Let's go to Beijing personally. Um, and we showed the importance of friendship with China for you and the Soviet Union as a whole. Contacts were made. Hopefully that'll bring in some money. But as you can see, our profit is non-existent. We're not making any money at all. It's almost like our YouTube channel. This is our YouTube channel. It's, it's a Agrippa Maxenius channel simulator. More than three years passed since the death of Enver Hoxha. His friends and family are already removed from power and a warming began in the country in form of amnesties and improvement of foreign relations. And this is an Albanian warming, so we'll go ahead and improve relations in Albania and Cambodia. Um, now, despite the fact that the new pro-Vietnamese socialist government of Cambodia is less authoritarian and doesn't use bloody Persians, unlike overthrown Khmer's, uh, and social conditions in the country are better than when it was ruled by monarchists, 
supported by the West and other opposing U.S. Star countries, red chimeras and monarchists who created a new party led by Pol Pot continue terrorizing the population. And the American views them as real representatives of Cambodia and the U.N. The amazing thing about this whole Cambodia thing is I think this was, um, and you can put this in the comments below what you think, this was actually um, a push by the CIA um, to make communism look even worse. I mean, where I'm not saying communism is great. No, no, no. But uh, Pol Pot was hated by, by every communist, and what he did was basically just exterminate everything in sight. Some of you may, the anti-communists here may say that's exactly what every communist does. I, I don't know if I agree with that. That being said, um, the CIA, the only communist government they ever financed was the Khmer Rouge government. Now, some people may say they did that because um, the Cambodians really, really hated the Vietnamese. And so the Khmers, despite the North Vietnamese being communist as well, they would, of course, they wouldn't, I, I don't think they would necessarily engage with the North Vietnamese, uh, but they certainly wouldn't let them take control in Cambodia. Also, make communism look terrible. So need, we need to decide what to do here. And I want to try and let Vietnam decide. Vietnam uh, declared a ceasefire in Cambodia, after which the military was withdrawn from the country. Wonderful. So Vietnam, as I told you, and Cambodia don't get along. The anti-alcohol campaign is going now. We will, of course, continue the price-raising campaign. These things are much important for uh, make big Soviet budget. So this is our budget. We've got our relations with China, our relations with the U.S. We're doing pretty well, and here, um, everything is red, so everything is under control. As you keep playing the game, some of these republics slowly start to fall away as, of course, the Soviet Union melts. And we can also see... Um, I think we're in April here, uh, 1989, we can kind of see how far we're progressing in the game. So, huh. So we can have elections for the council, or I can actually go ahead and allow elections for the ruler of the country as well. No. We will give a program of political reform, but uh, overall we are trying to uh, keep power. Unhappy part of state authorities decide that you're a threat to the country, so they're trying to isolate you in your country house. And this is the conservatives. Um, we could try to seek help from the loyal population or send the army to the capital. I'm going to try to seek help from the loyal population. Enraged people went to the streets and demanded your return, and the plotters had to retreat. Now we have to look out for those conservatives. They're definitely a problem um, and definitely a threat. That's our council of ministers, by the way. Um, we could go ahead and open our ministry for 100 political points. We've got an interior ministry, a finance ministry. I'm going to do some broadcast media, uh, but I don't think we can afford it right now. 15 points of political power required. We need to gain more political power, friends. The last meeting with the U.S. ambassador has highlighted that Americans are seeking a way to mutually withdraw both NATO and Warsaw Pact troops from Europe. Wow. Um, let's elude them about potential transition to the Rapikiki plan. I don't know what that is. Secret negotiations turned on an official diplomatic meeting. Despite the protests of the Chancellor, the Rapikiki's plan was signed and adopted. You have brought peace in our time. Hey, I think we just ended the Cold War, guys. I cannot forsake my principles. I share all the Soviets' people anger and indignation about the mass repressions that occurred in the 1930s and 1940s. Um, and with the party state leadership of the time, which is to blame. But common sense resolutely protest against the monochrome depiction contradictory offense that now dominates in some press organs. An essay a certain Nina Andreeva has been posted recently and gives a positive characterization of Stalin and among the other, other arguments, a long quotation ascribed to Churchill. Okay. Um, I'm going to support the thesis of the essay. We don't want uh, reprisals, but I don't see why she would support Stalin. Rejecting personal feelings is not absolutely one aspect of his reign. Interesting. All right, guys, we're also losing some army power here, as you can see. It's going down 62, although the loyalty of the KGB and our generals is very, very high. To increase our army power, I think we're going to have to, of course, purchase more army materials, etc. Um, I'm not sure I'm ready to do that. The Tiananmen Square incident. We're going to condemn China for this. So we're trying to be like the good communists in this Let's Play. Uh, and trying to basically help the people and, and just look like the good guys. And I think that's going to help us survive just a little bit longer. The liberals show themselves. The opposing faction with similar views, which secretly infiltrated our administration, decided that it is the best moment to show themselves and demand legalizing them after your retirement. Um, interesting. We're going to use the KGB against them. We have a very high uh, support rating from the KGB. Did their best. They bribed someone, killed someone, and blackmailed someone, and made him change his opinion. During the session, your opponent didn't say a word. Ah, glorious Soviet communism. 
All right, the Leninansk earthquake about, wow. So a powerful earthquake or medical facilities were destroyed. We're going to spend money from reserves to help the people. Okay, Gromiko died, guys. And we actually were attacking Gromiko quite a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pay homage even though the man wasn't right. He was respected by the people, respected by his party members, of course. So we want to try to keep fairly good relations with him. The Romanian Revolution. Because of the horrible economic situation in Romania, poverty and hunger among its population, and a gigantic debt, another wave of protests happened in the country, and soldiers shot the protesters. It led to a revolution which quickly heats up in Romania. So now we face the possibility of actually losing uh, Romania from our sphere, which I don't want to happen. But at the same time, I hate Ceausescu. He was a terrible dictator. And I don't know if we want to be, you know, seen as supporting this guy so we're actually going to insert our army and overthrow the government our army destroyed most of the opposition after arresting Ceausescu judged him on a tribunal and declared a new socialistic government so he probably went to prison which is better for him than what actually happened to him and his wife they were shot um, by a kangaroo court after a very short trial all right restoring relations between Egypt and the Soviet Union no course not we can't even get the opportunity and sometimes depending on the policy that you have you aren't going to be able to get that opportunity anyway thousands of belarusians led by nationalistic organization bnf decided to celebrate day of memory near the palace kodobati um a lot of civilians were killed by during stalinism so this is basically um they demand us to admit the fact that those people were killed by stalin's we are going to admit that fact so today the Soviet government officially admitted that during Stalinism and KVD killed innocent citizens near the palace called the place called Kuropati for political reasons. We want to distance ourselves from the Stalinists, but as you can see now, our map has changed. We've lost some support, some political support from the more conservative elements of our government. Um, the liberals show themselves. Okay, so they're opposing us in the elections. We're going to use the KGB against them. Um, so once again, we're using Stalin's tactics despite criticizing him. Hey, it's working, right? 1989, I'm loving this. We are really doing okay. All right, protests of liberalization. Um, I am going to use an army, the army against the rebels. Now, this is not going to arrested, by the way, arrested. This is not going to make us popular amongst the people, but we've got to do what we've got to do. So um, staying in power is the most important thing. And I'm going to keep on doing that. As you can see, though, we're losing loyalty in the KGB. That's scary. Once the KGB starts turning on you, you may find some uh, cyanide in your coffee in the morning. Or possibly a little bit of, uh, who knows, broken glass in your borscht. These things can occur when the KGB doesn't like you. So I'm going to see if there's anything I can do to improve relations with them. Uh, let's go ahead and improve infrastructure for the people. This is at least going to get the people um, on our side. We'll even increase Soviet services. And I wish we could send envelopes for the KGB staff, but we've already done that. So I'm not sure if there's anything we can do. Like I said, this is just a continuous downfall. And there we go. We'll accept a bribe to the KGB and law and order. It's going to be a lot of money, but hopefully this will get them back on our side. Okay, now this is about the Contras in Nicaragua. I mean, all of the things covered in this game could be there an entirely different game. It's really fascinating. So we should definitely increase the aid to the uh, to the uh, Nicaraguan rebels, the Sandinistas, against the Contras. Let's do that. But despite our help, the, the conflict went stale and heads of opposing sides joined a signed a peace treaty. That is unfortunate, my friends. Very unfortunate. And look at the loyalty of the KGB. It's still bad. And I think it's probably because we probably don't have any money left. Or we, we actually are making some profit. I don't know how. Uh, I have no idea how that's happening. According to the policy of freedom of speech, we are requested to repeal from Soviet laws an article about anti-Soviet propaganda because it defies the pluralism of opinions. I like the idea of pluralism of opinions, and it makes us look much less nasty, because we're basically saying people do have freedom of speech in this Soviet government. We're going to agree. Um, so here we go. The Constitution and Criminal Code were updated. All articles from anti-Soviet agitation were removed. I like it. Um, it's going to bring, I think, the people on our side. And let's take a look, actually, at the support of the people. I can't see support of people. I can only see support of everyone else. What the hell? I think support of people is just this page right here. Uh, this is another page here, and this gives us more information about, you know, the loyalty, the citizen income, etc. 
things things are uh, not horrible honestly um but we are at defcon 5 which is the best defcon it means the least likely uh time to uh to go to nuclear war so things are going okay Special services are completely unsatisfied with and think that your place should be taken by another ruler. They are preparing for an overthrow together with your elimination. They're going to try to kill me, the KGB guys. Um, we'll try and seek help from the loyal population. And we managed to stop the KGB. The coup is prevented. Wow, look at that, guys. Now, of course, we're back to the full dark red support of the people. Uh, but it looks like in the Baltic states... Um, actually, sorry, these are not the Baltic states. Isn't this Leningrad would be here? Maybe they are. We'll have to wait and see. Um, that being said, we're going to go ahead and see what happens next. Okay, so I wish we could have arrested the, K the KGB leaders, but that's not an option. Comrade, arguments take place about legalization of Solidarity Trade Union, which was banned in 1982. This trade union illegally operates in Poland. While criticizing Soviet power, it unites all people with anti-Soviet opinion, nationalists, liberals, and anarchists. Everybody! What should we do? Uh, we are going to support the rehabilitation of the trade union. You know what? If they want to have anti-Soviet opinions, we're going to allow them. It was legalized in Poland. It gave the opportunity to conduct anti-Soviet activity. We'll be able to see the results soon. Now, this could backfire on, on us, and Poland could leave the sphere. Uh, but so far, I have to say, um, I can't believe this is just a first-look gameplay video, because, honestly, this is the farthest I've gotten in this game. And, uh, I kind of want to keep going, but I'm not sure if you guys are having fun. If anybody's gotten this far into the video, please let me know in the comments down below. You get a gold star, but it's fool's gold. Fool's gold. Sorry, guys. After a series of mass protests organized by unhappy people, government began the negotiations that resulted in mass liberalization in Poland. All right, we're going to critically condemn the country's actions, uh, but unfortunately, they went towards liberalism. Now, liberalization in Hungary is also happening, but once again, they won the elections. Opposing faction. Let's send the army to the capital to support us here. Beautiful. The army broke into the, into the building when the session was taking place and arrested all members. Absolutely wonderful. Of course, our political power points are waning dramatically, and that's why we're not able to make any decisions when they come up here, uh, because we have no political power. KGB is very low, and it's worrying the whole state machine. Is it worrying you, too? Um, let's transfer money from the budget. That being said, I don't think there's much left. Um, robberies, murders, and attacks happen all across the country. Police can't deal with it, and a crime wave spreads through the country. Transfer resources from the budget, once again. <laughs> United Yemen. Conservative communist Abdul Fattah sent to Moscow because of health concerns. He was replaced by Ali Nasir, who began moderate economic reforms. And once again, we have to support a unification uh, because we have no political points. Um, and General Secretary of PRD Communistic Party became president. Hey, it worked out for us. Great. So uh, the Yemenis are uh, Soviets, the, or the communists. The only thing that I hate about the game, um, well, there's a lot of things I don't really like about the game. I still think it's fun. But one of the things I don't like um, is the fact that the countries, even when they have changed their political ideology, it doesn't reflect on the map. You still see them under authoritarianism or under uh, capitalism or, 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 you know, NATO tributaries, things like this, which is really frustrating. Um, so I don't know if the developers are going to fix that, but that's kind of annoying. Liberalization in the GDR, and this is the German Democratic Republic. Um, and is it the German Democratic Republic? Um, basically the Eastern uh, Germans that are communists. After a series of mass protests organized by unhappy people, the government was retired and new, a new one began the negotiations. They resulted in a mass liberalization. I think Oleg actually wrote, wrote this entire thing. Um, we have to critically condemn the country's actions, but now Germany is going to reform. And obviously that's the fall of the wall. That's a little bit scary for us. Once again, can't do anything except uh, condemn them. We can't do anything against Poland except condemn. But as you can see, we're still in power in 1990. Um, hopefully, we'll continue to be in power here for another few years. Uh, but the whole goal of the game, I think, is just to try and remain in power as long as possible. Eventually, something will happen. I think we're probably going to eventually be killed by the KGB. But right now, we're doing pretty well. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this one, guys. I would continue, but if you guys want to see a full playthrough of this game, or if you want me to stream it sometime, then let me know in the comments down below, and I'll definitely make that happen. Thank you to Tiberius for purchasing this game for me. If you ever want to purchase a game for me, uh, just, you know, you can always contact me via Steam. Add me as a friend, or don't. No, no, don't need to, of course. Actually, I think you do, um, to send gifts. Um, and uh, just take a look at my wish list and send me something from there. That always helps as well. Thanks again, guys. Take care, and have a great, great day. Glory to the Soviet Union.